video I'll be discussing several different types of climbing anchors that you can build, as well as some of their limitations and the context in which you should use one versus the other. I want to start by doing a quick follow-up on the V-anchor that I discussed in an earlier video. So typically when I've built this anchor in the past, I've just used one piece of webbing and one uh, carabiner for my master point. I had some comments that this wouldn't be a very redundant anchor, which is true that uh, if your webbing failed or your carabiner failed, then that would be it for the anchor. I don't think there's too much reason to believe that they would fail, but it's always better to be safe than sorry. So if you'd like, you can make the anchor more redundant just by adding a second piece of webbing and basically building the same anchor but with double the webbing. So you pull down the two pieces of webbing just like with the one piece rotate it 180 degrees and then clip all four strands at your master point. Um, this starts to look a little messy so you have to be careful that you clip all the strands. Uh, and then if you'd like you can use an extra locking carabiner. Now this way, if one of your strands of webbing fails or if one of your carabiners fails, then you have a backup. Another point that was made in a comment is about elongation. So if one of these anchor points were to fail, it's true that these carabiners are going to slide down from where they started and then finally end up at the end of the webbing. So this could potentially shock load your other anchor point. Um, however, if you're attached to the anchor with a rope using a clove hitch, or if you're just belaying off the anchor um, on top rope, then the rope will absorb quite a bit of the shock of that fall um, and reduce the impact force on this anchor. If you were attached directly to your anchor, like if you were to clip this into your harness, it would create a really big fall force on this other anchor point and you know the rest of the components of your anchor. It could even potentially be enough to break a piece of webbing that's tied in a knot like this. Um, that's another thing I should mention is that tying your um, webbing together with a knot is a pretty common practice and it's not necessarily frowned upon but it does reduce the strength of your webbing by a certain amount so that's just something to keep in mind. So one way that you can reduce the elongation of your anchor if one of the uh, anchor points were to fail is to tie an overhand knot just above your master point. Um, usually when I use this technique I prefer to use cord over webbing because it's just easier to work with. So basically uh, this anchor isn't going to self-equalize so you have to make sure that you're going to set in the direction of pull before tying your knot. So then you take all four strands of the webbing, or sorry, the cord, and you can tie either an overhand knot or a figure eight. Um, I guess the figure eight is just a little bit safer, but the overhand knot is acceptable. This can take up a lot of your cord, so you have to make sure that your angle of your anchor is still less than or equal to 60 degrees. And then you'll clip your carabiner into both strands at the master point. Um, if you want to be redundant, you can use another carabiner. So you have two carabiners. Now even if one of these strands were to fail, you still have the backup uh, piece of cord. If one of these were to fail, this won't elongate very much, so that's an advantage. Um, so overall, this is a pretty useful anchor. You can even do this if you have three anchor points, just pulling down the strands between each anchor point, tying the uh, overhand knot or figure eight knot in all of those strands. So finally, I'd like to show you an anchor that I would consider to be really safe and really useful for sport climbing and top rope climbing. So in this anchor, you use two pieces of webbing. You clip one into each of your anchor points making sure you lock the carabiners 
Always remember to lock those. And then you simply flip a carabiner into each strand of webbing. And you clip your rope into both of these carabiners. It's kind of like having two long quick draws. And then you make sure to lock your carabiners again. Some of the nice things about this anchor is that there isn't a lot of elongation if one of the anchor points were to fail. The other piece of webbing would catch it pretty quickly. Another advantage is that this is a very redundant anchor. You have um, two carabiners at your anchor point, locking carabiners, uh, two pieces of webbing. So yeah, even if one of these were to fail, you still have the backup. So one place where you wouldn't normally use this anchor is when you're trad climbing. Um, it's usually a lot more convenient to use the cord method that I showed earlier. Um, also, if one of your anchor points is way above the other one, then you could have quite a bit of elongation if this one failed. So to summarize some of my main points from this video, uh, if you want to make your anchor safer, you can always make it more redundant by doubling up on the webbing or the locking carabiner. You might also want to reduce any sort of potential for elongation or shock loading your anchor. Um, you can do this by either tying an overhand knot above your master point, which is easier to do using cord. Um, you could also just use two separate pieces of webbing. One thing that you definitely don't want to do is ever attach yourself directly to the anchor. Um, this will greatly increase the forces that are exerted on your anchor if you were to fall. Um, so you definitely want to tie into that anchor, that main point, using a clove hitch with a rope. Um, the same sort of logic goes for using your PAS. I would not recommend building your own PAS out of a piece of webbing, especially if it had any knots in it. Um, this could be incredibly dangerous, even if you were to take a small fall. Uh, tests have shown that Dyneema webbing, made with a Dyneema material, if you tie it in a knot and take a factor one fall of just, um, I think it was 60 centimeters, it could potentially break that piece of webbing. So you have to be really careful about that sort of uh, shock loading. I'd recommend just buying a PAS that's been manufactured for that purpose and trying to make sure you're always weighting it and not um, shock loading it. So I hope that gives you an idea of some different climbing anchors you can use in different scenarios. You know, if you're trad climbing, you might prefer to use cord lat with an overhand knot. Uh, if you're sport climbing, you might prefer to use the V anchor, or if you're not feeling as confident in your anchors, um, you might want to just use two separate pieces of webbing with locking carabiners on them. But anyway, that will give you some options and some things to think about, and I hope you enjoyed the video.